Here's the question. Let x be the outcome of a throw of a die. That's a single dice. Find the expected value of x. Now, since x is discrete, takes the values 1 to 6 in steps of 1, the formula for the expected value of x, which you just memorize, is equal to the sum of the outcome times the chance that it happens. So we've got six possible outcomes. So the first outcome times the associated probability, so we denote x1 times p1 plus second outcome x2 times the chance that it happens and so on. Uh, we can write this using a summation notation like this. These two are equivalent. So what we have to do is next write down the list of possible outcomes for x and the associated probabilities and then we substitute it uh, into this uh, equation. So x is the outcome of a throw of a die. We know that it can take the values 1 to 6. And if it's a standard die there's equal chance of it landing on each side. So since there are 6 sides there is 1 over 6 chance for each outcome. Now in terms of my notation this would be like x1 this would be like p1, this would be x2, this would be p2, and so on. So here we have x6, and this would be p6. So the formula says the outcome of the first one, that's 1 times 1 over 6, plus the second outcome, 2 times its associated property, 1 over 6, and so on, all the way to the end. The last outcome, 6 times its probability of occurring, that's 1 over 6. 1 over 6 is a common factor, we can take it out and then we just add up the and that comes to 21 we can write this as 3 and a half that's the answer. Okay, part B now let y equals x minus 1 find the expectation of y by 1 using the method the formula for the expectations and two, using the rules of the expectation operator and the answer we found for the expected value of I, x. Okay, let's deal with these in turn. Now y will be discrete because it's based on x which is discrete. So the formula for the expectation will be the outcome, the sum of the outcomes times the associated probability. Next we have to write down the table for each outcome of y and the corresponding probabilities. Okay, first let's write down the possible outcomes of y. Well, given that y is equal to x minus 1, if x is 1, y will be 1 minus 1, uh, that is 0. When x is 2, y will be 1. When x is 3, y will be 2 and so on, like this. So that was it simple enough. Next we have to write down the probabilities of each of these events occurring. y equals to 0. When do we get y 0? We get y 0 when x is 1. Now what's the chance of seeing that x is 1. The chance of seeing that x is 1 is 1 over 6. But to observe that x is 1 is the same as saying to observe that y is 0. So the probability that y is 0 will be the same as the probability x is 1. So that's also going to be a 6. Uh, let me try to say that more simply because that uh, previous statement seemed to be a bit of a mouthful. When What's the chance that y is 1? You get y is 1 when x is 2. Now, you're going to get x is 2 with a chance of 1 over 6. So you must also get y is 1 with the same chance. And so on. Another way to see this is to see that you've got 6, observations, six outcomes for y here. Each of them are equally likely 
because y is related to x in a linear fashion and uh, the outcome of each possible outcome of x is uh, equal chance of happening so y must inherit that characteristic. Uh, so substituting into the equation 0 times 1 over 6 plus 1 times 1 over 6 and so on and uh, I've skipped a step here because I've done that and then I've taken the common factor 1 over 6 out add them up in the bracket that comes to 15 and that gives me 2 and a half. So I've answered B part 1 now we have to do the same thing but using the expectation rule operator and the answer we found for expected value of x. Okay, now y is equal to x minus 1 which is given. Therefore, therefore using the expectation rules, if we take the expectation of the left hand side, we take the expectation of the right hand like so. Now we apply the expectation rules. The expectation is a linear operator so we can take this expectation sign through the bracket like this. The expected value of x we've shown in the first part of the question is three and a half. The expected value of one, well one is a constant and the expectation rule says that the expected value of a constant is the constant so that is one and that's the answer. Done. So for part B we have looked at two uh, separate procedures to um, solve the same problem. Part C. Is it easier to compute this expectation of y using the first method or the second method? The first method, the method using expectation rules. Okay, so you don't have to be Einstein to see that the second method using the rules of the expectation is much simpler. So that's been the aim of this question to show you that the usefulness of the expectation operator by knowing the rules of the expectation operator we can easily compute the expectation of random variables for which are functions of uh, other random variables for which we know uh, the expectations of. So here we knew something about x so we could use the expectation rules. If we didn't know anything by x then we'd have to use the first method using the formula and directly to apply, apply it to get the expectations. There's more material at www.statisticsmentor.com If you want to discuss this problem or look at similar problems uh, click on the link on the YouTube page in the description box below.